Welcome to another training session on PLC programming. In today's session, we will learn how to make a ladder logic for a small pick and place arm. Before starting, I would like to thank you all of you guys for supporting this channel and for some lovely comments. If you haven't subscribed this channel yet, please do click on the subscribe button, press the bell icon for the notifications. Well, let's start the today's video tutorial. As you can see that we have a setup to pick the box from the left side and drop onto the right side conveyor. When a box comes in front of the box sensor, the pickup numeric cylinder will come down to the down limit sensor with a vacuum cup attached in front of it. As the vacuum cup touches the box, vacuum will start to create a suction pressure and it will grab the box next the cylinder moves up to the up limit sensor now the vacuum cup is holding the box at up position and the whole system is on the left side confirmed by the left limit sensor next the whole system will travel towards the right side with the forward running three-phase motor and reaches the right limit sensor. Next, the pickup cylinder moves down to the down limit sensor and turn off the vacuum output and drop box on the right side conveyor. Meanwhile, the pickup cylinder moves up and as soon as reaches the up limit sensor, the whole system will travel toward the home or left side limit sensor and wait for the next box to come. Let's see closely the setup and discuss the addresses of these input sensor and outputs. First of all, we have a box sensor to detect the presence of the object. This sensor address is I0.0, .0. means this sensor output wire is connected at I0.0 .0 input of the PLC. Next, we have a pickup pneumatic cylinder which move up and down and create a vertical linear motion. This cylinder is activated by turning on the PLC output Q0.1. Next, a vacuum cup is attached in front of the pickup cylinder to grab the box. This vacuum cup is activated by the PLC output Q0.0. Next, we have two sensors to detect the pickup cylinder position. We have installed up limit sensor and down limit sensor connected at the PLC inputs I0.1 and I0.2 respectively. Next we have to move this whole setup to the right side. We have a three phase motor to move the whole setup in reverse and forward direction. When we turn on Q0.2 output of the PLC, it will energize the forward contactor and system will go to the right side. Next we have to bring the system back to the left side. We have to energize the reverse contactor by turning on the Q0.3 output of the PLC. Next, we have installed two sensors to detect and confirm the position of the system on both left and right side. The left and right limit sensors are connected to I0.3 and I0.4 input of the PLC. These are the addresses of the inputs and outputs. Let's see a short message from the sponsor of this video. FNR Asai sent me a SG004A signal generator tool for the review. It can generate 0 to 10 volts and 4 to 20 milliamps current signals. It can also generate signal and simulate as RTD and thermocouple temperature sensors. It can also generate high frequency outputs in kilohertz and we can also program output signal of this tool as per our requirement. Next, if we open this box, it comes in a very cool and secure packing. The signal generator tool feels and looks really cool. It is really handy and pocket size. Next, if we use the buttons, it feels very tactile and the buttons are also illuminated with LEDs. Its build quality and plastic looks very robust and solid. These are the ports to connect the signal wires. This meter is not only a signal generator, it, an it can also measure volt, current, frequency signals as well. Wire leads comes with it. These also feel good. Wires are soft and these crocodile clips also feels good and robust. Let's test the signal generator and set the meter as 4 to 20 milliamp signal generator. We will go to the input menu and set the current signal range as 4 to 20 milliamps. As you can see that our multimeter is right now showing the 4 milliamp signals and as we increase the signal from the tool, multimeter also shows that. 
This tool is really affordable, especially if you are a beginner and want to learn or you are expert and want to troubleshoot the analog signals. This tool is really very handy. If you want to buy this product, the link is in the description. There are some other more cheap and affordable signal generators. I have given the link in the description. Just go to the video description and have a look on these as well. Now let's see the ladder logic. In network one, we have a logic to start the process. It is simple logic. When the auto start bit M9.0 is turned on and there is a box comes in front of the sensor I0.0, it will turn on the box available bit M10.0. In network two, we have written the ladder logic for up and down movement of the pickup cylinder Q0.1. So when the auto bit is on and box is available on the rising edge, it will latch on the cylinder bit Q0.1 and the cylinder will go down to pick up the box. This cylinder Q0.1 will turn off when it reaches the down limit sensor I0.2 and cylinder will start to come back to its original up position. The second thing when the cylinder reaches the down limit sensor I0.2, it is at the left side it will set on the vacuum output Q0.0 to create a suction pressure to grab the box. In network number three, we have written the logic to move the box to the right side. For this, the logic is simple. When the pickup cylinder is at up limit I0.1 and it is at the left side confirmed by the sensor I0.3 and the vacuum output Q0.0 is on, it will latch on the output Q0.2 to move the system to the right side. And this output Q0.2 will turn off when the system reaches the left side limit sensor I0.4. As we have used the normal close contact of this sensor to unlatch the output Q0.2. Next, when the system reaches the right side position sensor I0.4, it will turn on the pickup cylinder Q0.1 to go down and drop the box on the right side. When this cylinder goes down, we have to turn off the vacuum output Q0.0 to release the box. In the network number four, when the auto bit is on and system is at right side confirmed by the sensor I0.4 and the cylinder position is down confirmed by the sensor I0.2, it will reset the vacuum output Q0.0 and the box will be released on the right side conveyor. Next, after placing the box on the right side, the whole system have to come back to the home or the left side position. In the network number five, we have the logic to move the system from the right side to the left side home position. When the system is at the right side limit sensor I0.4 and the vacuum Q0.0 is off and the cylinder come back to the up limit sensor I0.1 on the rising edge of the RLO, it will latch on the output Q0.3 to move the system to the left side by energizing the reverse motor contactor. Once the system have reached the left position sensor I0.3, it will unlatch the output Q0.3 and the system stops at the left side home position. So this is the programming for the today's tutorial. Next, we will upload this program into the PLC and let's see how does it works. As we turn on the auto start bit M9.0, the box comes in front of the sensor I0.0. It will turn on the box available signal bit and pickup cylinder Q0.1 goes down, confirmed by the down limit sensor I0.2. It will turn on the vacuum output Q0.0 to grab the box and the cylinder will move up to the sensor I0.1. Now the cylinder is up and holding the box. Next, the whole system will move towards the right side limit sensor I0.4. As now the Q0.2 move right output is on, the system will stop at I0.4 right side limit sensor. And the pickup cylinder Q0.1 again goes down to the down limit sensor I0.2. At down limit sensor position in the network 4, vacuum output Q0.0 is reset now and turned off 
and it will drop the box onto the conveyor. Next, the pickup cylinder moves to the up limit sensor I0.1. As soon as the cylinder reaches the up sensor on the rising edge signal in the network number 5, the move left output Q0.3 turns on and the whole system moves towards the left side limit sensor I0.3 and stops there waiting for the next box. So this is how we can make a program for this pick and place robotic arm. If you want to download the program code for the today's video tutorial, the link is in the description box. I hope you like it. Do share, like and subscribe to my channel for more learning videos regarding PLC and HMI programming. Till next time, take care and goodbye.